Hello and welcome to Study in Slovakia. Today we have Mr. Peter Zavatsky. You might have heard from us many times about Mr. Zavatsky, who is the owner and sole proprietor of uh, Study in Slovakia. He is the person who guides us and also many other students with entire paperwork and all of these process and also does consultation for majority of us as students. So we are glad to have you, sir, over here. Thank you so very much. Uh, also, I had like quite many uh, cases uh, this this year when the students saw my uh, like our colleague Peter Pletka who is doing the recording. So then, uh, when 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 they, when I met them, they were surprised that it's some yes, so because not the same Peter. <laughs> yeah, I had I had similar similar situation because uh, Peter guys also Peter and also your Peter. So uh, there was a confusion. Yes. Uh, he's basically our um, the owner of uh, study in Slovakia and the main consultant who helps students and today our topic is going to be about medicine so studying medicine so it's going to be all about studying medicine in Slovakia and especially the the video is going to be about some scams and some agencies that are promising fake uh, and way contracts some fake contracts as well uh, to students and promising uh, fake things so it's going to be about that he's going to take us through uh, um, all this process and then explain us what things do we need to be careful and what to expect what not to expect so without further ado, further ado let's get into the video and let's start So uh, thank you, sir, uh, for joining us today in the uh, call. Uh, firstly, I would like to ask you that uh, there are a lot of students from uh, Europe and also from non-European countries, and they want to study medicine because of uh, maybe there are less number of seats in the government, government universities in their countries, or maybe the private universities are very expensive. So uh, give us some uh, idea about like, uh, how is it to study in Slovakia um, general medicine and uh, what it takes, what it requires, for example, the entry criteria and what are the fee structure and so on? Uh, yes, uh, the program of medicine, uh, not only the general medicine, but also dental, is one of the most popular programs definitely uh, in Slovakia for international students. It means that over 50% uh, maybe of uh, foreign students who are studying in English language they study uh, general or dental medicine, and then also veterinary medicine is very popular. Uh, if we take a look on the price, we will see that it's somewhere in average of the prices. You will you can maybe find some some cheaper universities in in Balkan countries, but with price you can count within. 10 to 11 euros, uh, 10 to 11,000 euros uh, for one uh, year. So total uh, length of the studies is six years for both general and dental medicine uh, and also veterinary medicine. Uh, there is also advanced program from veterinary medicine, uh, which is uh, there for uh, graduates of similar uh, studies. And uh, maybe one thing uh, which I mentioned also, like the admission is based solely on entrance exam, uh, so there is no uh, relation to your marks from the secondary school, which is very big benefit, I would say, because if you take students from uh, Germany, uh, from Poland, Spain, uh, Finland, all these countries, they have uh, very strict rules on on uh, on uh, which marks you need to have from, from the high school diploma. Exactly. Uh, so that means that without very good marks, you cannot get uh, accepted to medicine there. So that's why uh, people from Poland, Germany, uh, Greece, Spain, uh, Portugal, they study in Slovakia a lot. Yeah, that's very common because we have uh, many international friends who are coming from these countries to study in Slovakia. And uh, generally that is a criteria with high school grades and percentage. And uh, if I ask you like what type of subjects, is there any particular subject requirement that you need uh, from your high school or is it generally open to anyone belonging to like biology or chemistry background, let's say something like that? Uh, yeah, it's open to anyone who finished the secondary school or let's say higher secondary in in uh, Asia, South Asian countries. Uh, so anyone who will successfully finish the secondary school uh, is then eligible, will then write the entrance exam from biology chemistry and if you pass, you exam uh, you get accepted regardless of what, where you have subjects in uh, secondary school yeah so there's no relation between secondary school mm -hmm. admission 
that's great that's great to hear actually it might open doors to many students who were like maybe sad or maybe you know like unable to reach to medical universities but they want to study further medicine inside europe or even doesn't matter where they complete the degree but they want to study medicine it might open doors to many students that's great to hear and what about for example the procedure that uh, when we want to apply to study medicine how does the procedure work let's say if i'm graduating by uh, june or july of a year then by which month should I be applying and when do I start the procedure? How do I apply? Which website do I go to? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are four faculties of medicine. Uh, it's three universities, so you can apply to all of them. Everyone is uh, following the different procedures, but uh, you do not need uh, to have the like completed uh, secondary education at the time of the entrance exam for three of them. And uh, just for Faculty of Medicine in Bratislava, you will need to present also your secondary school. So basically, uh, there's online application form. You pay the application fee, submit some documents, uh, and then uh, you will select which date you wish to come for the entrance exam. Uh, during pandemic, it is possible also to write uh, exam for Comenius University uh, online for other universities it will be done offline so it means in person so you can decide which one you prefer and for Comenius University you do not need to even travel anywhere which can of course change in the future like uh, maybe they will come back again to offline uh, exams what about for example the application fees and uh, for example let's say uh, this uh, portal do we apply directly or do we go to some consultant or do we let's say contact you how do we apply um, when we are up applying to these uh, like students of course every time can also apply directly if they have uh, some consultant definitely it's big uh, i would say it's uh, advantage uh, for them because then uh, they can be sure that there will be no issue with uh, documents and that everything is done as, as uh, it's required so uh, students definitely can decide and can can tell uh, okay of course <laughs> as an agent i would say like it's uh, more beneficial for them to have someone who knows the process and can help them with, with uh, all the procedure but uh, of course like if if they wish uh, definitely uh, by them, so. suggest them to contact someone local who can Help them not only with the application but also then with the process during the study yeah that's uh, that's actually true because uh even i experienced the same because uh i came uh, with your contact so i remember because uh, there were like a lot of paperwork and a lot of things and a lot of uh, let's say government places i needed to go to do the rec degree recognition and all those things and alone doing it would be like really a big hassle for me but uh, because i had your guidance like uh, honestly speaking that was a big benefit for me that i could directly go in over there and you were already there translating it doing all the paperwork and everything it was really helpful for me as well so yeah, i would recommend anyone like uh, to take some help because uh, it is sometimes helpful to uh, get uh, an agent or a consultant to do some of the paperwork some of, because many times we don't speak slovak language so that time those times it's quite helpful because the maybe the office or those places speak only slower uh, which takes me to my uh, next question which is like uh, what about the degree recognition like uh, is this degree entirely valid all over in europe or even out of europe and how does it work for example i'm an indian student i come here to study and after studying i want to go back to my country is the degree valid because school uh, like it doesn't matter you can study in like you can study in english basically uh, you automatically will get recognition of the degree in any European country. If you mm -hmm. want to go back to, to uh, let's say India, uh, you, before that, you need to check properly like what are the current requirements uh, for the recognition. It's in Europe, it's valid automatically. Uh, even if you study English, still you will have the same uh, recognition. You do not need to do any extra exams. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if 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 you want to go next day to Germany, they just check it in German. That's it. Yes. Uh, so okay. take benefit in case you wish to uh, then work uh, somewhere else. It's that's great because 
because that is a big benefit that you don't have to give the licensing test in every other country that you travel and you have to again do the registration and everything it's not a problem like that you have a common registration you can just speak the language you go and start working mm -hmm. yeah definitely that's, yeah that's a that's a big benefit for example in Poland, you after you finish your uh, medical education you will need to take another 13 or 13 months of internship in hospital and then take one more exam. So basically, you don't start six years, but seven years, uh, which is interesting. That is why you do not need to take this internship afterwards. You can simply come back to Poland and work there as doctor, which is like uh, Yeah, so it's an easy way out for many students, let's say. Yeah, like, you know, there are so many Polish students, yes, and they speak, mm -hmm. they, yes. they study English, so probably... Yeah, I was actually, I was actually wondered, uh, wondered because uh, there are, there were many students from uh, West of Europe or, let's say, from different countries, but I was also wondered that people are from Slavic countries are also coming to Slovakia to study, and I was like, uh, why don't they, uh, like, uh, look, uh, like, are there not good universities in there? home country but now i understand because uh, it might be with the limited number of seats or with the length of the study that it's better to come in slovakia study and go back and then work in their country yeah definitely yes someone studied their first degree which is something let's say a bachelor's of medicine it is not bachelor's but in different countries it's called in different way let's say mbbs in india it is called so how do uh, someone who studied MBBS wants to work in Slovakia or wants their degree to be recognized and wants to study masters or I don't know, like specialized MD, how do they uh, do this? And uh, what are their scopes over here? Mm -hmm. And now it's quite complicated process. And this will be, uh, we will like now explain the process because it will be really important. Uh, as are already some, some, some doctors <laughs> contacting me and, um, so basically, the process has maybe five or six steps. So okay. firstly, uh, if you want to recognize your degree, you need to get your uh, documents apostilled or stamped by the embassy and mm -hmm. it by uh, translated to Slovak. Okay. And you will submit these documents to the Ministry of Education, uh, who will consult uh, with the uh, with, many, uh, with the medical universities and then will decide, okay, so it's the same or it's not the same. Because for example, in Slack uh, universities during six years, totally it will be having maybe 5,000 uh, hours of the classes or practice. So okay. it's, it's, once they recognize, uh, it's just first step. Second, it takes is, uh, some time, right? Like a month or something. It takes time. Okay, so to... there, are, uh, yeah. So one month will be time uh, they can ask you to give you more documents, and two the months they need to give a decision if, if everything is uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this was just the first step. Uh, then second step, you will need to pass the language test, so mm -hmm. language test. Mm -hmm. And you need to pass in third step also so-called like additional uh, language, uh, additional specialization uh, exam. Okay. And what is this additional specialization, basically? Yeah, so it means that you will have uh, exams from four subjects. So it's from internal medicine, pediatrics, technology, and surgery. So you have these four exams, like you do in front of medical committee. And you do this okay. term in Slavic language. Okay, so it means basically if I studied, let's say, from India, MBBS, so I come to Slovakia, I submit this document recognition, and then I come to Slovakia, I write this internal medicine for subjects in Slovak, and then I get the uh, recognition. I think still, it's not uh, complete, but uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, like bachelor, you know, it's not the same bachelor as uh, like doctor of medicine. But the difference is, it means once I come over here, I need to have some proficient level of, uh, let's say, medical Slovak in order to write the tests in Slovak and get the recognitions. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, we did. Uh, so you did recognition in formal parts. Then you okay. did Slovak language uh, test. Then okay. you did the specialization uh, exam uh, from four subjects plus mm -hmm. pass it. Then you will mm -hmm. think uh, oral part, which can be having also. Uh, 
practical part. Once you pass these exams, only then you can come again to Ministry of Education uh, of uh, Yes Education uh, and ask them for recognition of your degree so you can work as a doctor. Only after these yeah. three steps. Everything so far you did in Slovak. So mm -hmm. once uh, you did that, you can then work as medical doctor. Uh, but then the next steps will come. First, yeah. Uh, uh, so this is this is enough to work as a general practitioner, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. And what if I want to work like like let's say like I'm not a doctor, but speaking like if someone wants to work as a, a specialized doctor, I don't know, like ENT. Mm -hmm. Gastro or something like that. Okay, so let's say that you now finish this procedure. Mm -hmm. How you want to become a cardiologist? So it okay. is, you need to go to any hospital or any clinic, and you need to get uh, full-time contracts. Okay. And you are not from European Union, so you will need to do residence permit, work permits, and. Uh, uh, and only then you start. You start your first day, and okay. after the probation period, which is three months, you can then uh, go and uh, ask your supervisor if you can do specialization in uh, in uh, let's say cardiology. Yes? Only mm -hmm. if you agree, you can like ask for enrollment for cardiologist. Um, uh, training and only then your specialization is starting. <clears throat> For every specialization, there is like given list of departments which you need to visit. It means you need to go, to, let's say, to uh, urgent care for three months. You need to go to, uh, I don't know, uh, RTG for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like all in total, uh, and every step you are doing some. Uh, internships and you're doing some exams. Uh, mm -hmm. This can take three to four years easily. But in general, if I take, there are basically two sides that a person who is planning, let's say, is already a doctor in India and planning to move to Slovakia to practice medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, general two steps that he needs to look for. First is basically the uh, Slovak language preparation because he has to give all these tests in Slovak. And the second is like degree recognition. Once he moves in, Obviously, he'll find a job because he's a doctor, and I think there is a good demand of doctors in Slovakia. So once he finds the job, then he can slowly proceed in Slovak language itself to study uh, further specialization, MD or something. And it's a mix of training and studies, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you will get like small index, uh, which is like let's say some result card. So every day they will need to confirm. Okay, you pass this, you pass this. You can go to next department. Only once you will finish all the internships at different, mm -hmm. uh, different places, only mm -hmm. you can go for the final uh, attestation. Okay, so in Slovakia it's called attestation, attestation, mm -hmm. attestation exam. So only afterwards you can then go to final uh, exam and become cardiologist or anything. Okay, and this might take two to three years all in total. Maybe even more, yes, but for like you know this in uh, uh, like in advance, like uh, mm -hmm. which departments you need to visit, how long it will take, the minimum time, and so on. Uh, that's interesting, and that's actually in a way I think it's good because if someone is planning with an abroad degree to work in Slovakia, it's probably that he will be having clients uh, speaking, Slo not clients, but patients speaking Slovak, mm -hmm. and he should or she should already know Slovak and it's good that she will be or he will be giving all the exams and is already prepared with the language with the medical terms and can start working directly so it's good I think in a way that someone who is planning to move in Slovakia should start preparing for the language at least in the medical way and uh, then basically move to uh, plan to move and then uh, start over here to work like this is the current situation like uh, that, that's uh, currently valid, so we will see uh, if it will be changed, but definitely we want to do any kind of doctor job or any specialization, definitely you will need Slovak language, uh, mm -hmm. without that you cannot start. Yes, obviously, because patients will be probably speaking Slovak, except a few internationals maybe. <laughs> except Indians. So.